Yeah, John Wiley Price, that, that, would, that would ring a bell because I, I really like and got a profound respect for John Wiley and what he, the image that he uphold, even when I didn't understand it as a kid growing up in Dallas. He kind of seemed like he was a brother that was standing for something and, and keeping it solid. And I understand why a lot of the older folks kind of shied away from uh, spirits like that. John Wally Price. So, so yeah, shout well, out. With to John him. Wally, I was a personal friend. He's a personal friend of mine. And I went to several functions that he was involved in. Mm -hmm. I went to several candlelight visions when he was locked up downtown. We would meet downtown with countless. Mm -hmm. uh, this was in the late 70s, mid 70s, and early 80s when he was uh, jailed for minor things and for protesting. And we would meet down in the jailhouse for candlelight visions to get him released and all. And uh, this was something that I was involved with you know, during those times, I followed him through some of those situations. And John Wally, he did great things, but he was mistreated. And to me, he was mistreated by some of his own people because they really didn't understand. And they would call it making waves. Don't make waves. But it wasn't making waves, it was standing up for your rights. But some people just didn't understand, and to this day, some still don't understand because some be saying that the kids with the Black Lives Movement are making waves. But more people are joining me in now to accept that this has to be done more than I saw in the earlier years. So now I see more older people who really see that. There's no way out of this unless we come together and stand together, and they're accepting it more. Which if they had done earlier, no telling what kind of progress we would have made by now. Mm -hmm.